Life is Strange Double Exposure is a game that every Life is Strange fan was imagining in their head for 9 years. Everyone imagined what a direct sequel to Max Caulfield's story would look like, and the comics released a couple of years later gave us a glimpse into that, but their status as canon is not very clear, there's a couple different timelines, so we needed a game that addressed all the questions that were left in either of the two endings of the first Life is Strange, but I gotta say that the sequel, Double Exposure, did not meet my expectations. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna review the game, I'm gonna go over the things that I like, the things that I didn't like, say how the game could have been improved, and also what my expectations are for the future of this franchise. Also, this review will contain heavy spoilers for Life is Strange Double Exposure and the future, so if you haven't played the game, if you want to, don't want to get spoiled yet, then please skip towards the end or skip this video, because I'm gonna discuss some heavy stuff. So where do we even begin with this game? There's a couple of things that I think are very important to address and we're going to cover everything. But I really want to focus on, first of all, the story, like the basic overview of the story and what I didn't like. Then I'm going to go with the characters and then to some of the specifics that a lot of the fans were not happy about. So Double Exposure is set in this new academy called Kaladin. So Max Caulfield is in college. She is now in her mid-20s and she discovers that she has a new power. So this takes a place a long time after the ending of The First Life is Strange. You get to choose which one of the two endings uh, happen. And from there is our big first mistake because uh, people expected a lot out of a sequel because it was not going to be easy due to how the first game ended. So you can either choose to save the town and risk Chloe's life. Basically, she ends up dead in this timeline. Or you can save Chloe and then the whole town gets destroyed. So either one of those endings is like you get several glimpses of what could have been but it's just not very consequential at all. You get some text from Chloe in the main game. If you choose the ending where Chloe lives, like I did, you get just a couple of texts, just a couple of dialogue options where she realizes that Chloe's still alive. But I have to go against the grain here, like I'm gonna give my contrarian opinion. I feel like the way they handled this story was very emotional. Like the way they handled the Chloe uh, lines that where she references her. Max still makes the audience know that even though she's not in love with Chloe anymore because they break up in this storyline, uh, she still has a lot of affection towards her, like love in the sense of, you know, a person that who she's really attached to, even though, like, whatever way it, that might seem. And I had a choice. Save the town. I have to admit, the graphics look way better. Or save the girl that I... That I loved. Say it. Say the word love. Come on. The fans want it. I chose her. Come on, man. The blue-haired girl. Oh. Hearing her, seeing her get shot in a dirty high school bathroom, I couldn't live with that. So I think the Chloe thing, I made a whole video about that, but a lot of people were not happy with that. I feel like it was going to be hard to just introduce her with the whole Safi storyline going on. But I hope she go comes in the future. I, well, you know, after this game, I highly doubt it because they're going to focus on different stories, on the Safi storyline, all that kind of stuff. It's heavily implied towards the end that Double Exposure is going to have a direct sequel. But at the same time, I realized that this game needed also to have at least a couple references to the first game. Like, it's basically the first one that launched the love for this franchise and the attachment to these characters. I feel like they did some things right. I feel like they did some things wrong, mostly wrong. But at the end of the day, I don't think it's that consequential. But anyways, I got sidetracked with the whole Chloe thing because I'm very passionate about that. But the idea of the game is that Max is discovering this new power. She uses it to solve a new mystery. And she encounters this new character, Safi, who gets murdered. And after that, Max discovers that she has this ability to travel between two timelines. One where Safi is dead and one where Safi is still alive. So that's how the mystery unfolds. You get to explore different areas of the game, uh, basically using that trick. Like you have to open a door, so you travel to a timeline where the door is still open. You go into the room and then you travel to the other timeline. It's not as creative as the time travel, but it's certainly better than some of the other powers we've got in this series. <laughs> Are you serious? And yes, I'm going to compare this game to True Colors because I think it's definitely better, especially with the characters, which I'm going to go into next. But I got to say the story had a lot of really slow moments, but I feel like the highlights were really highlighting. And the ending, I just didn't think it's it really 
hell to my expectations, but we're going to go to the ending later. Now we're going to discuss the characters. So over the course of the story, Max meets several different characters, most importantly, Safi and Moses. I feel like those are the two uh, side characters in Max's story. First of all, let's focus on Safi because she is the most interesting character, especially with how her story develops when she gets murdered. Uh, Max can travel to a timeline where she's alive, and then she discovers things about Safi's past that lead towards discovering the mystery behind her death in the original timeline. So I gotta say that Safi is probably the most likable character in the whole Life is Strange mythos since Chloe and Max in the first game. I feel like the game has had like a couple ups and downs, aside from the brothers in the Life is Strange 2 and Rachel Amber, I feel like we haven't really gotten a character that is as iconic, and I feel like she still has to grow on me, but I so far I really like Safi, I like her personality, and it seems like we're gonna see more of her in the future, which makes me optimistic for the future of the franchise. But other than that, some of the other characters, some were good. For example, Moses, I didn't expect much of him from the beginning. But at the end of the game, I realized that he was really relatable. He was really fun. I think he made a really good side character. But at the beginning, if you don't like it, just realize that Moses gets way better by the end. I think he became one of my favorite characters and also somebody that I would like to see more in a sequel to this game. But other than that, most of the characters I didn't really enjoy, and especially the romantic options, that is something I have to rant about because this game has two romantic options. And over the course of the story, like, I didn't really like them. Those are Amanda and also Vin. So Amanda, I think, is like the most generic NPC-like character in any game. I didn't, I, I liked her, but she's just okay. Like she, I, I don't, I didn't think, she, especially because I have like Chloe still, I, like she's still on my mind and during the game I was like, it just felt wrong, so I didn't want to go through that in the story. But at the end of the day, I guess the romantic options didn't really matter. I feel like there was really no consequence and that's part of a bigger problem with the Life is Strange uh, games, that the decisions you make, it feels like they don't have any consequence towards the end. And that is a big problem that the franchise has because if you compare the decision-based story games such as Until Dawn and Detroit Become Human, which are the two best uh, examples I can give in this genre, where your decisions matter so much. Like, your main characters can die basically in the beginning of the game, and that just branches off the story into something completely unexpected. That never happens here. It feels like no matter what you choose, you can choose all the wrong options, and you're still gonna get the same ending. And that's a criticism that also goes back to the first game. So it's not really a decision-based game. But going back to the romantic options, I feel like Amanda was just very okay, generic. And then Vin. Vin is probably the most unlikable character from the very beginning. I Like, he... I, I like to make fun of the, these games, like, calling them life is cringe. Because you'll be playing normally and then there's a line that hits you from nowhere that is so cringe-worthy. Your eyes roll back to the back of your head. Mm. These are the romance options. You drive a hard bargain, Caulfield. Mm. But I like it. <laughs> A rather full of surprises. drink battery acid. I usually Elicit just day drinking with your coworkers is sexy. Be sexy, Max. What the fuck? And this game is full of those moments, and about half of them come from Vin. I think he was just so annoying, and I honestly thought he was evil too. Like in the beginning, I was like, okay, this character is probably uh, involved in so like Safi's death in some way, shape, or form. And at the end of the day. It wasn't the case, but I still suspected to the point where I didn't want him as a romantic option. But in the end, it didn't matter. But those characters, the game tried to push them so hard to be just like main characters that you want to care about. But I just didn't feel that in the end. Other characters such as Gwen and Safi's mother are okay. I didn't think they were either good or bad. Like, it's just kind of like forgettable. But I feel like compared to True Colors, which had just basically nothing going for it, especially that main character and her power, uh, this game is much better than that one. But at the end of the day, I feel like there's a lot of things that I could have liked better. But I want to go into some of my thoughts about the gameplay itself and the pacing of the story. So I'm going to be honest, this is probably the Life is Strange with the most filler in the whole story. It's probably tied up with um, True Colors and not as bad as Tell Me Why, but it still has a lot of filler. Especially in the first two episodes. Oh my god, what a bore fest in the first two. I was so exhausted, but... It really did start getting good by episode 4, but Jesus Christ, there's so many just tasks that you have to do that you feel are leading nowhere, and it's kind of, it, it's important to set up the mystery later on, but oh my god, I was just so exhausted by that point. I was just like, yeah, this game has so much filler. And another thing is that by episodes 4 and 5, which is where the story is getting much more interesting, everything is starting to piece together, you discover that Safi is actually a shapeshifter, which uh, marks the first time in the Life is Strange uh, saga where two characters in the same game have powers instead of just a protagonist. 
I feel like that was so cool, and I think it would, it would have led to a lot of different things if those chapters were not as short as they were. I feel like they were just too short. I would have loved to see more. It took me, I think, like an hour and 10 minutes to fin finish each one, and that I didn't like that. I feel like it wasn't it didn't make my money's worth. I I think it could have been better to extend those and not without like with chores. Maybe it's a good thing that they ended early because the first and second chapter has so many chores that it just became boring by a certain point. The ending was also underwhelming, so now I'm going to talk about the ending to just to wrap everything up. But basically it dives into the same topics as the first Life is Strange towards the end. This is just like really deep Lovecraftian horror that you don't understand with the storm, with like what's going on, with the Max's powers going crazy. And this happens to Safi and you get a couple things, for example Max trying to mentor her throughout her powers going crazy that makes the continuity, the continuity across the games much better. But other than that, I feel like it just could have been better in that regard. I feel like it could have, like that story, even though they confirmed that they're going to continue it in the future, I think it was just, it didn't reach the heights of the first game in terms of storyline. Like by the end of the game, I feel like there was no consequence. It was just focused more on setting a sequel and a closing a very powerful story, like the first one did with its ending and the two important choices you had to make. But yeah, the game is just, I don't think it was worth the price tag. I feel like it's, it felt kind of like a DLC to some of the other games. Um, the first one is still always going to be my favorite. I feel like that one it was just amazing. And overall, I don't know. I think also the just the practice that the, the, the publishers did with, with releasing the two first chapters before by paying an extra price was really scummy. I think that translates into the final product. It just feels like a product that was made to make more money, especially with the protagonist. But I also made the argument that it was a good idea to include Max because otherwise the games would just be too uninteresting. I feel like the biggest sin from uh, True Colors was that the new characters that were introduced, just like completely separate storyline, were just not interesting at all. And in this one, I felt that I feel like if Max wasn't there, it would have been the same case. And even though Safi came in to breathe some life into the franchise, it was just not enough, and I feel like it doesn't justify her having her whole game, which is what the game implies for the future. But anyways, I, I don't know what to think. I feel like a, the game was good. It was decent, but I'm not sure that it was as good as I would like it to be, yeah, especially as a direct sequel to one of my favorite games of all time. So anyways, I'm going to give Life is Strange double exposure, uh, 72 out of 100, and now I want to explain a little bit about the ending and what I think about the future of the franchise. So the ending was kind of confusing. I realized that this game is setting a sequel with new characters. And basically it's kind of like having this Avengers moment where Safi's going around looking for people with powers. I've seen those boots like that before. So you can run, or you can follow me and get some answers. Your choice. And I did not expect that. I feel like this game is setting up kind of like a crossover between all the different characters. I really hope they don't do that. I, I argued that one of the best things of Life is Strange is that it takes a superhero storyline, like people with powers that discover they have special abilities, and instead of putting them in the spandex and making them save the city or whatever, like most superhero stories do, this one is basically just focusing on the day-to-day -day of these characters and real-life problems. And that's something that makes Life is Strange special with the, the powers of these characters. So I feel like going the MCU route is not going to end well. I feel like it's just going to be too corny if they do that in future games. But they might surprise me. I don't know. By this point, I don't. I feel like every game Deck 9 has made has had so much flaws compared to the first game, which I consider flawless. I still think that game, well, without getting into nitpicking, obviously, but that game was just perfect in my eyes. But yeah, by the end of the game, I feel like Safi going off into her own adventure trying to recruit these characters is just not... I feel like it's going to be a mixed bag. But anyways, I'm curious about the future of this franchise. And yep, those are pretty much all my thoughts. So if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll leave a playlist with all my Life is Strange videos. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.